Hey guys, Moran Pober here with another video and this one is all about the exit strategy. So right now you have a business, you negotiated a deal, you closed the deal, you uh, already know what to do to start and grow that business. But with that process of growing the business, I want to show you what you need to start and do to actually make sure you have the best exit if and when you decide to sell your business, right? I mean, and again, you don't have to sell your business, but if you decide that, hey, I want to sell my business, let me show you what you can do in order to make the most out of it. Because you can, um, there's a huge, huge differences when a buyer is about to buy you. Um, it can offer you uh, two times multiples your pre-tax profit, your EBITDA, or five, or seven, or ten times. And those differences can be in the millions, right? I mean, if you have a business making um, 200,000 in net income, in bottom line profit, and a buyer is offered to buy you at two times your um, bottom line profit, that's 400,000. But if he offers to buy you at five or seven or 10 times multiples, that's much more money that you can make um, just by changing a few things along the way while growing the business. Sometimes the difference between a buyer offering to you um, five time multiples versus three times multiples are, are very small. And those are things you can change probably within a few weeks in the business just by structuring your business and positioning it, positioning it, uh, positioning in a way that will look better for a potential buyer um, and I'm going to show you some of the things we're going to talk about all those things and what a buyer is looking for when he's buying a business and what are the things that you want to change when you're about to sell the business um, those things that I learned from my mentors uh, people who sold many many businesses and those are things that I'm trying to implement in every business that I'm getting involved with so I want to share those things with you as well um, cool so why companies want to even acquire your business or <clears throat> why a buyer would want to buy any business and there are <clears throat> there are many reasons for that anywhere from they want to diversify the business base vertically or horizontally they want to increase share or gain critical mass in existing markets they want to penetrate new customer segments they want to enter new geographic markets or they want to access a new sales network, or they want to obtain new products or services to sell in the current markets. Um, maybe they want to gain access to new processes or technologies. Um, sometimes they just want to extend um, supply chain or eliminate a competitor, um, or to acquire key management, employees, or sales staff, or to lower production costs through economics of scales. Those are the main reasons why um, I found out that someone will potentially want to buy your business. And just by knowing those things, it could open your eyes uh, when going out there and looking for a potential buyer. Um, like one of my mentors, Ko Mirza, he used to tell me that, and I'm going to talk more about this in this video, he, whenever he had a business, he started building relationships from the get-go with a potential buyer and that's something that I want you to do as well. So yeah, what drives the value of your company when selling? And some of the things you'll learn in this video, a loan could be offered as a separate uh, separated service that you can offer, right? I mean, if you have that knowledge of making a business to be valued more than it is right now, you can literally go out there and offer that service to a business and take um, flat fee, char charge for that, or even take percentage of a sale or even equity if you know how to sell it right. Um, but some of the things that I'm going to show you right now, they're gold, they're literally gold. So why do you even scale the business? Um, in the end of the day, we all want freedom. And if you have a, sell a sellable company, that's the ultimate freedom. I mean, if you can sell a business, and it's not about even selling the business as much as having a sellable company. Because when I'm saying sellable company, 
and I'm going to talk more about that, it means usually that you're, you don't need to be involved in the day-to-day -day as the owner. Um, that's a sellable company. It's much easier to sell a business where you, as the owner, um, the business is not dependent on you. And that's something that uh, a potential buyer really loves to see. And that's something that, that is awesome. And I mean, if the business is not dependent on you as the owner, then you can keep running the business and it's all good. You still have your freedom, but you also have a business that is valued at much more um, for a potential buyer. So that's another thing to consider. Even if you don't want to sell the business, you always want to work as if you're selling the business just because it, it's going to provide a better lifestyle for you. And many companies can sell because they depend on the owner too much. I mean, you can see it in many, many businesses, especially when... Um, um, I'd say up to at least 1 million in sales, you can see it many, many times, like it's basically a business making 1 million a year dependent on one person and yes, it could provide him some kind of a lifestyle or um, maybe he feels like he's more in charge and stuff like that, but in the end of the day, it's really hard to sell a business that is dependent solely on you. Um, I mean, why would someone want to buy a business? from you where he knows that as soon as he buy you um, basically everything is done because you're depending on that one person and who knows what will happen after that person leaves um, so yeah as one of the owners you want to run away from doing everything yourself otherwise you won't be able to sell the business not at the price you want always delegate always build systems always think how can i get away from the business and still have the business run even better when I'm not here. Um, two really, really great books about that is uh, one of them is Emit and the other one is Work the System. Um, great, great books to um, kind of like, they talk about those things, basically how to build systems, how to grow businesses, why it's important to have those systems in place. And um, it's, it's really, really great books that will open your mind about this concept about being the actual owner and not being the employee running the day-to-day -day again and again and again so yeah if the customers have to talk to the owner to buy the business um, you'll get a, to a plateau that um, is really hard to overcome so basically to, to buy the it's not to buy the business but if basically if a customer Whenever you want to buy the product, not the business, um, he got to go through the owner. Then that's something you got to um, think about and figure out how to get away from that. If the business depends on the owner, a buyer will pay much less. Uh, we mentioned that. Work to get the business to a point where it's not dependent on the owner. Um, crucial, crucial, crucial. You'll get much more for the business if it's not dependent on the owner. Again, um, and it could be as simple as just hiring one person. That's all. Uh, for example, if the owner leaves for a vacation, can the business still grow? Um, think about it. You, you as one of the owners, if you're going to leave for a vacation, can the business still work and grow? And if you structure everything like I said, then there shouldn't be any problem. But if you have a partner, make sure same goes for him as well. If he's not in the day-to-day, -day, um, make sure there are people to replace him to do that same job and still have the business grow. Um, you want to get employees to act as if they were owners. Um, get them more involved. And owners, I mean employees, they will love you for that. Um, you give them more opportunities, more option to grow. I mean, and it's a win-win for all sides. I mean, they'll take more responsibility and you'll have more freedom and have a better business that is valued at much more. So um, some more stuff you want to do. Create standard operating procedures for your employees who could follow it. You want to have literally systems in your business, step-by-step -step systems showing exactly what to do. So you want to get to a point where if you take someone from the street who knows nothing about each one of those step-by-step -step systems in your business, Everyone should read those procedures and you should be able to follow those procedures to the T. Like you should be able to take someone from the street who knows nothing about that business, that process, 
And just by reading that manual, you should get to a point where you know what to do. Um, yeah, so don't be dependent on one single customer as well, employee or a single supplier. Same goes here. If a buyer want to come and buy a business, like right now when I'm looking to buy businesses, if I see that more than 50% of the revenue of that business is dependent on one customer, that's really risky for me. I mean, why would I want to put all my time, all my energy, some money and all my resources into a business that could literally go down almost um, if we're losing that one customer. So that's something you want to consider as well. Um, always try to diversify, look for more customers. Um, make sure that you're not dependent on that one customer. Um, same go for one employee. Um, you don't want to get to a point where if you don't have that employee, you're done. Um, and same goes for one supplier. You want to get to a point where, hey, if that supplier can't work, let's have other options. Um, yeah, and like I said, if more than 15% of your revenue come from one customer, that's not good. A potential buyer won't like it. So always think, hey, how can I get more customers? How can I diversify my revenue portfolio? And work on that just on your day to day. I'm just thinking about those things. Hey, what can I do to bring in more clients? Uh, what can I do to not be dependent on that one customer, one employee, one supplier? And just work towards that um, place where you're not dependent. Um, and yeah, like I said, work on getting more clients and diversify things. Cash flow is key. Another thing, your valuation will have direct relationship with um, how much cash your company is throwing off. So, uh, and I'm going to talk more about that. So we're talking cash in the bank account and not P and L or profit, right? Um, um, I hope you know you know that. But um, if you're not, just read a little bit about the difference between profit and um, cash right because profit is in is in the PL. that's not real cash you can have a lot of profit for the business but you can have zero money in the bank and the more money the more cash flow you generate to the business the better um, because here's the thing when a buyer um, when he is about to buy a business he basically need to write two checks right one of them is to um, for the the seller to buy the business and one of them he needs to bring money uh, for working capital, right? So the more cash the business need to operate, the, the more capital the buyer will need to bring in, right? Makes sense? So the less the business is worth to him, basically. The more cash you have in the bank, the less money the buyer will need to bring in in order to operate that business, which means he will be able to pay you as the seller more money at closing. Uh, so if you could show him, hey, look, we're generating cash constantly. Um, you don't need to worry about working capital. He could pay you more. Um, and yeah, the way it works is that think if you had $5 million to buy a business. You need to write two checks. One of them is for buying the business and one of them is for working capital. So the more they'll need to put into working capital, the less they'll could pay for the business. Now, there, you're probably asking now, hey, how are we going to increase that cash flow? And the simplest way to do it is, um, so yeah, increase ways for cash to come in um, and basically slow down the pace of which cash is going out. Basically playing with receivables and payable. And like I said in the, the video about how to grow a business, you want to always talk with your employees, hey, how can we just have in your meetings, just ask them, hey, what can we do to bring in more cash faster? What can we do to slow down the pace of which cash is going out? How can we maybe pay suppliers in a later date? Or what can we do to make sure customers paying us more right now? Um, so those are some of the things you want to go through and making sure you have action plans so you'll have more cash in the bank. Um, so here are some things you could do. So you can ask customers to pay faster, tell them to pay within 30 days instead of 45 days, for example. And if they're already paying within 30 days, try to make them pay within 15 days or even right now and give them some discount maybe. The other way is to slow down cash that is going out of the business. So you can ask for longer payment terms. Um, can you pay suppliers in 45 days versus 30 days? And if they're not allowing that, can you find different suppliers? Again, don't be dependent on one supplier and you can basically make them compete with each other to bring you a better price. Also, can you reduce inventory? Can you pay more on credit card, for example, for suppliers 
and, and take advantage of more days of float that you get, more cash in that in that period. So those are just few things you always want to think about. Hey, what can we do to have more cash in the business? Because the more cash we'll have, the more cash we are able to generate on a uh, on a consistent basis, the more um, the less money the buyer will need to bring in when buying the business and just the ease, it's just a better business when you're generating cash. Um, yeah, easier to scale the business if you focus on less products. So sell less products to more customers versus lots of products to few customers. Um, again, it's about focus, right? You want to be the best in your thing. You want to be the master of your area. It's going to be much, much easier for you to focus on less products and just be the best at those services, those products, versus going out there and constantly looking for more products to sell. Because um, it just, whenever you start and sell a new product, it's like, it's almost like you start a new business from scratch, like literally. Um, and sometimes it's dwelling, and you'll have much, much better time focusing on less. Focus on on the few. It's so key. So focus on products that are easily teachable to employees that are valuable and not a commodity and ideally repeatable that customers can buy on a regular basis. Just some of those practices could really, really help you. I mean, if you have services or products that you could easily show your employees how to sell them, what to do with them, um, it will make life so much easier for you. Um, so more things you could do is consider bundling together a few products so people will value them more. Um, basically just take few of your services, combine them together and give them a better price. People will see it as much higher value. Basically like many companies doing right now with the phone, internet, um, cable, TV and stuff like that. Um, they're bundling um, one package together and just looks much better. And you can also um, give them a better price that way versus selling them separately. And it's just going to really, really define you and... Um, I guess it's a huge added value to the, to the client in the end of the day. Um, yeah, so the buyer only care um, more about the future stream of profit in your business in the end of the day. I mean, you want to show a buyer that he will have a lot of profit moving forward. So the more you'll be able to show him, hey, you're going to come into the business and yes, it's making good money now, but show him why and how it's going to make a lot more money in the future and it's going to be a huge value for him so yeah how much money you expect to make in the future and more importantly for a buyer is how reliable are those estimates if you could show a buyer hey look we have contracts for the next 12 or 24 months and we know 100 percent we're going to make x we're going to make one million dollar for the next 12 months no matter what without even bringing in one more client that's huge, guys. I mean, a potential buyer sees that and he knows, hey, I can pay them more right now because I'm going to get $1 million in the next year, no matter what. So I'm happy to pay them more right now. So what can you do to maybe have longer term contracts with, him, with, um, with customers? And yeah, you'll just get paid less if there's no predictability for next year's profits. If you're going to show a buyer, hey, look, we have one time pay, one time buyer here, one time buyer there. Um, there is nothing predictable. I mean, nothing guarantees that we'll get even one sale as soon as you buy the business. There's a chance that we'll make no sales. Um, that's just not going to look good for a potential buyer. So yeah, if they don't believe that you'll make what you claim you will, you'll get less, period. That's, that's pretty much it. So what can you do in your business right now to show a potential buyer that, hey, our income is predictable, you're going to keep making a lot of money after buying us. And when you are able to show that to a potential buyer, he'll be willing to pay more. That's all. Um, some more stuff you want to do is make, make it easy for a potential buyer to get his financial and legal information about the business. Be organized from day one. I can't tell you enough, guys, how much, how crazy it makes me when I talk to a business and they have, first let me, first of all, it takes them sometimes more than, a month or two to bring me the financials. I mean, it just look amateur. I mean, it shows that something isn't right there. Something isn't organized. I mean, a good business that's making a decent amount of money, you should have all the information literally by clicking a button 
in his uh, accounting software or just by talking to his accountant. And when someone is not organized, his financials are all over the place, it's messy, it just really frightened me up as a potential buyer um, to, to buy that business because I don't know what's going to happen there, um, literally. So the more organized you are, the more you show a potential buyer that your financials are set. Like literally, um, I would suggest you to have your financials, your legals, everything needed for a potential buyer um, to literally have that on a Dropbox ready to send them. Like have a link ready to send to a potential buyer like one or two days after they ask you for that information. And if you have that ready for them, oh my God, like you're golden. You look so serious. You you differentiate your, you differentiate, different, my English today is so bad, but you, you look so different than a business that it, it have don't have those financials ready. And it's crucial. It's going to change everything, guys. It's like someone will be like, yeah, this business looks legit. Let's pay him a little bit more. It's no, no worries. Um, some more stuff. Survey your customers. Ask them if they recommend your products to their friends, family. And if the answer is no, ask why and what you need to change. It's a great prediction for a business future growth. Um, that's something you could show a potential buyer. Hey, look, our customers, they love our products. They love to recommend us. And I remember reading about, about that somewhere that it's basically a prediction for a business growth. If your current customers are really happy to recommend you to their friends and family, the predictions of you growing are much, much higher. Um, and yeah, most businesses, they get anywhere between three to five times multiple EBITDA, which is the pre-tax profit. Um, obviously, it depends, it changes. Um, for bigger companies that are doing more in revenues, they'll get paid more. Um, but the more your business looks legit, the more you'll get paid. The more predictions you have for future revenue, the more you'll get paid. The, the less dependent the business is on the owner, the more you'll be able to get paid, the more cash you can generate, you'll be able to pay, get paid more. All of those little things, you really, really want to pay attention to them because they're, they're, they'll be a huge difference for you. Um, yeah, your size definitely have an impact on valuation and how much someone will be willing to pay. Um, just common sense. I mean, the bigger you are, um, the more someone will be willing to pay just because you have a bigger buyer. Uh, for example, public companies, they won't even come close to uh, companies that are doing like 1 million year in sales, right? They want huge, huge companies. They want like companies doing at least like 5, 10, 20, more, 30, 100, 200 million, right? Um, and obviously, the bigger they are, the more they'll be able to pay just because if a public company want to buy you, even if they'll pay you 10 times multiples, your profit, the moment they buy you, just by them being a public company, they're going to multiply their their investment. They're going to be worth um, like 16 to 20 sometimes multiples just from buying you because they have the power of being a public company. Um, some more stuff is can you handle demand? Um, don't expect to get paid a lot for business if a potential buyer don't have a place to grow more. So uh, if a potential buyer right now He's coming into your business and he's thinking, hey, I want to grow that business, obviously. Like, remember, the exit is the finish line for you, but for the buyer, buying you is the starting line, right? Remember that. And when someone is buying you, he want to know that he can grow you. I mean, and if you tell him, hey, look, we don't have a place to grow, we don't have enough um, employees, our facility is too small, we don't have anything to grow more, like, we're done, we're at our limits. Um, a potential buyer won't like that because he want he basically if he don't have where to grow why would he want to buy you you don't want to buy you and stay um, flat line right um, remember the buyer care about your future stream of profit so how can you show him and prove him that your future stream of profit is growing and reliable how can you show him that hey look if you're gonna buy us you can do X Y Z A B C D to grow the business and there are so many opportunities for you to grow that they, we didn't do yet when you're going to show him that, he'll be excited to buy you, right? I mean, just common sense. Remember, he's buying you. That's his starting line. He's thinking, hey, how can I even grow them? How can I grow them much more? And if you show him, hey, we can't grow anymore, 
then it's a bad sign. Um, if you're not growing, it will be harder to sell for higher multiples. So you want to show him you're constantly growing. If you're showing him, hey, look, our business is flat. We're losing money every year. Um, it's a bad sign as well. So do whatever you can to have that steady growth. Um, so yeah, you got to focus on growth. And a few ways to do it is um, you want to uh, focus on existing markets. So a few ways, right? You can focus on existing markets versus new markets you can enter. Um, you can use existing products you have now versus new products you can add to the mix. So always think, hey, what can we do to grow the business? And we got me, we're going back again to um, how to grow a business, right? So you just want to bring more customers and you can, again, use your existing markets or go into new markets. You can use your existing products or bring in more products. You can have more ways to bring in clients and, again, go back to the videos on how to grow a business. Uh, but it's about growth. It's always about getting more leads and getting more sales and just growing the business. And the more you can show a potential buyer, hey, look, we're growing like crazy, um, then he'll be more excited to do those things. Um, yeah, every idea, dream you have about what you want to do in the future with the business, tell the buyer, show him the potential. So if you have ideas on things that you would do if you were him, tell him, hey, look, you could do so many things after we leave. I mean, you could do X, you could do A, you could do this, you can do that. Tell him about those opportunities. It will, it will get him excited. I mean, tell him, hey, look, we I wish you have done that, but I don't have time. And right now, I want to, I'd rather sell my business because I have a different product I want to focus on or because whatever your reason for selling, right? You can even say, hey, I don't even want to sell. But if you're giving me a good offer, then awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll explore that. But at the same time, tell him, hey, look, if you'll give me a good offer for the business, I'll definitely consider selling it. At the same time, I know that there's so much opportunities for us to grow still. And look, I mean, look at all those things that you could do if you'd buy the business. Um, and I'm not, I'm not motivated to sell the business, but yeah, if you want to buy it and you want to give me a fair price, then I'll definitely consider that. Um, so more stuff is recurring revenue. This is gold, guys. It's again, it's predict predictability, right? So how can you add recurring revenue aspect to your business? When you have recurring revenue, your lifetime value of a customer is much higher. Um, it makes your business so much more predictable and buyers love it, right? Once a customer is subscribed also to something, um, it makes him want to spend even more. And just think Amazon Prime subscribers. Um, each, uh, I remember reading, they're saying that they spend three times more every year than average regular Amazon customer. Um, so what can you do to bring in subscribers, to have customers on a retainer basis, on a recurring revenue basis, and buyer, a potential buyer would love that. He'll see, hey, look, we have all those customers paying us every month to be involved. And that's why SaaS businesses are going crazy now, like software as a service uh, businesses, because most of those uh, businesses, they have recurring revenue. And they know that, hey, they have their stats. Hey, we have a recurring revenue. We know that our customers are going to stay at least six to 12 months. And we have predictability. So with that predictability, we can play with the cash. We know what we can do to grow even more. And I mean, predictability of revenue is gold, guys. And when you can show a potential buyer that, then it's awesome. So think about with your business, what can you do to add some kind of recurring revenue streams? Um, and it's sometimes using the same products, the same services. It just introducing them and positioning them and structuring them in a different way. So yeah, the more recurring revenue you have, the more valuable your company is. Your business will be worth literally three times more compared to another business with the same profit that is not recurring. And the more recurring income you have, the more valuable your business is, period. Um, so more stuff you want to think about is what competitive advantage you have. And if you're not different, you at least need to look different with your marketing and USP. So when clients think you're different, it gives you pricing authority where you can control how much you charge for products and services. And the more different you are in the marketplace, the more you'd be valued at. Um, because remember, buyer won't buy for premium money a business that is easy to replicate. So what can you do to position yourself in a way where you are unique? And sometimes 
it's just in a way that you position yourself. Like, uh, think about Zappos, right? I mean, they started by just selling shoes, but the way that they sold those shoes, they have amazing support. They had um, crazy guarantees, like, hey, just send us back your shoes and it's all good, right? So think about what can you add to your business in order to show that you're different um, from your competitors, right? So always be different. Think, how can we be unique? How can, you <clears throat> how can you show that you're better than your competitors? How can you show that you're different? Develop a list. Um, so that's another thing, right? So after you start in doing all those things and you start to um, structure your business in the right way using all of those strategies that I mentioned, start to develop a list of a potential strategic buyers for your company and maybe um, just they'll pay more, right? I mean strategic buyers will pay more just because you're going to be a strategic acquisition for them and probably they're going to have a lot of cross-selling and synergies with you guys so they will be willing to pay more because they know that they'll have much better returns because they already have their structure in their business when if they bring you in it would be an amazing upside from day one just by having you so go develop a list of potential buyers and think, hey, what company out there we could be a great, great add-on for them? Either um, our technology, our services, our product, some of the, those things that I mentioned in the first slide, remember? About why someone will buy a business and think about those things. Hey, how can we be this to um, any other company out there? Who are those companies that we can be that strategic fit for? So search for companies that potentially will want to buy a company like yours or maybe even already bought companies like yours, but you could have a little something a little different than those they already bought. And sometimes they'll buy you as well just because they want more revenue and they want to show growth to their shareholders. So have a list, build relationships with those people. Um, you want to contact ideally the corporate development, the CEO and the product manager. Start building relationships with those people. Um, <clears throat> and right nowadays, I mean, you have LinkedIn, you have uh, events. You can start using all the ways that I showed you to find businesses. You can use the same processes to now find yourself a list of potential buyers and just go and reach out to them and add value to them and tell them, hey, look, um, ideally add value to them, right? So you can tell them, hey, I saw this and that. I believe you could do better by doing that. And oh, by the way, here's my company and my signature and he'll check you out. And obviously you need to start building that relationship slowly. So ideally, um, unless you meet him in real life from day one and tell him, hey, how's it going? This is me, this is my company, here's what we do. Um, you can start building relationships online by adding value to them. And then it'll feel like, oh my God, he knows so much about my industry, my business they can add so much value to us. They already add so much value to us. Imagine what will happen if we'll actually buy them. And that's crucial. And don't be afraid to, to talk about stuff. I mean, don't be afraid to tell them, hey, you could do this and that much better. And sometimes just, sometimes just because they're a big company, they'll rather buy you than develop all of those things internally. So don't be afraid to talk about some of the things that you're doing better from them already. Um, yeah, so go out there, build a list of 10 companies that could potentially buy you and start building relationships. How can you help them get in new markets, existing markets, innovations you have, etc.? Go to the list in the first slide and think, hey, how can we be that, that added value to what company? And just go out there and do your research and look for companies that could potentially buy you. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for now for the exit strategy. A lot of really, really great information, guys. Go through the video again if needed right now and summarize with yourself. Hey, what can we do to do this better? What can we do to do that better? All of those things that I talked about, those things could be the difference between you selling the business at three times multiples and you selling the business at seven times multiples. And like I said, that could be a difference worth millions to you. So why not already i mean you're already in the business you're already the owner you already probably have at least weekly or monthly calls with the uh, the ceo the manager or the employees whatever your structure is 
So why not work on more ways to make your business look better? Um, so definitely think about those things. It could be a huge, huge difference in your exit. Um, and yeah, I wish you the best of luck.